So these are some shower LED lights I picked up from Robert Dias a couple years ago, I think in the after Christmas sales. Uh, I believe for half price, four pounds. Um, there's a bit of a design flaw with them. There's actually a second mode where they've combined a Christmas light flashing circuit with the meteor effect, which means that the last two LEDs never actually get a chance to light. So I'm not sure why they did that. Probably because this flashing circuit is meant to be used with different various um, variants of Christmas tree lights that actually blink, not the meteor shower type. So I've detached one of the icicles uh, to have a look at the meteor circuit. Years ago, I think uh, Big Clive on his channel went into all excruciating detail all about these meteor lights. Uh, this one seems to be, when I looked at the uh, pinout and how it was wired to the LEDs, I think it's consistent with it being a PIC-12 connect ground to pin 8, positive to pin 1, and the whole thing works. Now in our Big Clive video where he shows you how you can construct these um, meteor lights yourself using a PIC-12 and some microcode programs that he, uh, Big Clive wrote himself. Um, he's driving 12 LEDs using just four of the data pins. Uh, I think he reserved um, two of the pins for to, as a control in order to select various effects. Um, well, actually you only had one pin needed. This one, however, has just 10 LEDs and it's using four, uh, I believe, of, uh, actually five of the pins in order to drive them. Now, Big Clive's method of doing this was uh, tri-state multiplexing, and in that method you only need four data pins, uh, general, general purpose input output pins, and you can set them either to um, positive, ground, or high impedance, and using various combinations of those, select each of the LEDs to light. And with four pins, you can select one out of 12 LEDs to light. Uh, with five pins, you should be able to do 20. This one is doing 10 using five pins. And I traced out what, which pins were lighting which LED and I realized why it did this. It's um, because it lowers the cost of the board. The board can be um, wired single-sided. So it, it's a single-sided printed circuit board that's connecting up these LEDs. And in order to have 10 of them be selectively lit, it needs to use five of the general purpose input output pins. Now I had an idea of what to see whether I can use this uh, this PIC-12 like chip to drive uh, different sort of LEDs, these are surface mount LEDs, and using just the same chip and that means I'd have to wire these LEDs up to the the microcontroller in the exact same way that these were. Now there's a problem with doing this uh, in that in the, this printed circuit board some of the traces were going between the positive the, the, the anode and cathodes of some of these LEDs. Now with these surface mounts the anode and cathodes are, are just uh, a millimeter apart. So I'd need to somehow 
have a trace go between them if I'm going to do it with a printed circuit board. Uh, alternatively, I could go into three dimensions and not be limited by a single-sided circuit board. And, and that's where the wiring gets a bit more complicated. So the idea is to use a two-layer uh, sort of printed circuit board, but I don't really have the patience to design a printed circuit board and then send it off to one of those printed circuit board manufacturers uh, overseas and then wait a few a week or so for them to deliver 10 boards back and since I'm going two layer I think it'll be uh, considerably more expensive so I uh, thought I'd just do it by sticking copper tape onto paper and the idea is to take this and line it up on top of the one and then that should give me the two layer printed circuit board it's not really a printed circuit board this is um, all handmade I didn't want to mess with chemicals to make my own circuit board and uh, I believe that would still be single sided. Well that was a bitch to solder, but I think I got all the LEDs connected up. So the uh, pick is supposed to go here. Okay, so I've removed the chip here and I just solder it onto my makeshift printed circuit board. Um, so this uh, dual layer slug tape circuit board. Let's see if it works now. So the chip is actually um, upside down so it would have been like this and so therefore the positive would have been that pin which is um, connected to this copper strip here the negative is this copper strip here and the meteor animation is now a spiral I guess I can now uh, cut this out and put it into some sort of uh, enclosure. So I bought one of these metal pendant kits from the works for two quid and I think it um, has this uh, resin lens like covering. Um, it's about uh, 25 millimeters across, which is why I designed this so-called printed circuit board um, to be that exact dimension. So my idea is um, to cut this out. So I'll place it in here, stick this on top. It gives just enough distortion and um, will help scatter the light out in a more interesting way. Close of view what it looks like underneath the uh, resin dome this is showing how the uh, resin dome is scattering the light in an interesting way uh, so we're getting both the reflection uh, as well as the, as the refraction through the um, curved lens like shape and here it is completed in the medallion kit um, with the uh, resin convex uh, cover it's currently powered by a CR2032 in a makeshift uh, battery holder I've also put in a switch to turn it on and off uh, although I think um, if I ever want to revisit this project again uh, I'll probably go with the 
how Big Clive did his kryptonite necklace with the, keeping the battery holder separate if this is to be worn around the neck. Of course it also currently stands on its own as a standalone decoration. <laughs>